Hi everyone and welcome to the Dodo Bird Nerd. It's me, the Dodo Bird Nerd, and in today's video I'm going to be going over the Pokemon from Generation 8 that have extinct animal inspirations. So, without any further ado, let's roll the intro and let's get started. one quick thing before we get started, that being that all works and images used will be linked in the description of the video. So the first thing to go over exactly is how I divide the Pokemon here into three categories based on how accurately they match their extinct animal. So the first category is an exact match. Essentially the Pokemon is exactly what you would want for a Pokemon based on that extinct animal. Next up is the close enough category. Basically it gets a good chunk of the characteristics you would want, but there are some things that are missing that would make it a truly good version, like a good like representation of that extinct animal. And lastly is the how category. Now this is generally for if there is something pointing it to it maybe being a certain extinct animal, but it just does not stick the landing of this in any degree. And so... Uh, it just does not, it gets a how category for if it does not meet that at all. And there are two bit more of criteria I have for the uh, animals and Pokemon in the series, mainly the Pokemon for this thing, but it's kind of related to the animals' bases that they're based on, is I won't do anything that's just a generic version of a certain animal, like Sandslash is just a generic pangolin, because there's like extinct animal, and there's extinct versions of every animal, really. So I can't really just go for the generic ones because then it basically be every single animal inspired Pokemon, which is most of them. So that would just basically be going over every single one. So I'm just going for the ones really that have a direct line to an extinct animal. Or in some cases, it's been uh, their only thing they could be based on is an extinct animal. It's just a generic version of just something that's entirely extinct. And then the final little criteria thing is that I'm not going to do anything that's just accidents into being a dinosaur just due to being a lizard of some kind or a reptile because that happens somewhat frequently and they were probably not intending for it to be a certain type of dinosaur while doing that but it just ended up looking like that due to being a lizard or a reptile well lizards are reptiles but specifically a lizard in most cases and so that is why i won't be covering them at, uh, like the ones that just accident into being a dinosaur just the ones that have to be specifically made to be a dinosaur really in the series so, the first is the Honorable Mentions category, which is similar to last week, not last week's, last a month's, um, one in this, well, not last month, last, last Pokemon video, that's the correct wording, um, and I have another Honorable Mention. While there is one I could have covered in Toxtricity, I didn't, I didn't cover it because it's more of a generic, it has some stuff that might point it to be a certain extinct animal, but I didn't think it was as, like, good enough to even mention really so but if you want me to mention that one in an addendum video which will be going up after this one like in the next pokemon video will be an addendum video let me know in the comments down below but anyway the honorable mention is going to be the galar fossils and so like they're all based on extinct animals but they're like half of that extinct animal squished together with another extinct a animal so i decided not to put these in the main like specifically going over the direct inspiration with like, the categories and such so i thought i'd put them here because like technically they are but at the same time they're so just different from the extinct animals they're based on because you just smush two together and i mean that was the point of it so, I thought I'd mention them here. If you want me to go a bit more in depth into what each part is likely in terms of an extinct animal, which has generally been uh, theorized by fans for a while since they were revealed, like, what exactly each part is, let me know in the comments below. I'll do it if I get enough support for it, but I just didn't think it was enough of a decisive thing to really state and, like, bring them into the rest of extinct animals. Because all parts of them, again, are extinct animals, by and large, they're just kind of two things they smush together, and all of them are extinct. So again, if you want me to cover them there, and then in the video, I will. But I just didn't think, just due to the fact that they were clearly going for something different with them, that I would mention them in honorable mentions. 
but not in the full rest of the video. Hope that makes sense. So anyway, moving on to our first actual extinct animal for this video, we have Rillaboom, as it is traditional to have the grouse type starter here, and it is the Giganthropithecus. So with this being a Giganthropithecus, I mean, it's, it's a gigantic, it's, Rillaboom is a big old ape. And Giganthropithecus is again another, it's a rather large ape. So you could definitely see the similarities there. However, there's definitely some differences in terms of like details on Rillaboom's like face or like in difference to the Giganthropithecus. And there's just some other differences there. So I'm going to give this one a close enough. Like if you want a Giganthropithecus, you should probably go with Rillaboom for now and likely for a while. Um, but it does serve the purpose needed to be a Giganthopithecus Pokemon. It's just not, like, fully there to being a full Giganthopithecus. There's more in theory that it could do to be a better Giganthopithecus, so that's why I'm going with a close enough category here. Next up is Ice Q, and Ice Q here is with the Great Auk. Now, you might be thinking that Ice Q is, is, is a penguin. I mean, looks like a penguin, all that rot, which you would be correct. It very clearly looks like a penguin. However, when you look at where Ice Q is from, like get where Galar is based on, they had the Great Auk present there. And then when you factor into that, um, its behavior is very similar to um, a Great Ox and what they would do. So it's almost like they were going for a Great Auk design, but then they changed it to a generic penguin later on in development or whatever. Because it has a lot of those traits associated with a Great Auk. And it makes more sense for it to be a Great Auk based on where it is from. Like the region it's based on. Like where region from is based on. But it's not. It's a penguin. Not a Great Auk. Because the, the two do look rather similar. They're not incredibly similar. But they're close in terms of how they look. And so you can definitely see that maybe this was intended to be a Great Auk originally in design. It's just... Later on, they had to change it to just being a generic penguin, but they kept all that great awk, like, inspiration in its behavior and in some of its appearance, honestly. So, it's going to get it close enough for that. Like, it has basically everything that would be needed for a great awk Pokemon. It just, it doesn't look like the great awk that much. It looks like a penguin. However, it has all of that inspiration in it, like I mentioned previously. So, I think this is the first time in the series that behavior... And, like, what the Pokemon does is giving it that extinct animal inspiration, even though it doesn't really look much like it. Obviously, just due to being a penguin, it looks a lot like a Great Arc, just because the two, again, are similar. But just due to that basis, um, like, ideas in terms of, like, what it does, being very similar to a Great Arc, then I'll give it a close enough due to that. Again, I would prefer maybe an evolved form of Ice Q that looks basically like a Ice Q but it's a great awk instead of just being a penguin would be cool. But I don't know if we'd get that. Maybe a regional form that looks more like a great awk and maybe is ice water types to make it different enough. I don't know. But I would prefer a potentially a better great awk Pokemon. But for now, Ice Q is a very good in terms of behavior representation of a great awk in Pokemon. And the last Pokemon line for this video is going to be Drapey, Dracloak, and Dragapult. And these are going to have inspiration in the Diplocalus, which is an extinct species of amphibian. Now, this is going to be the only exact match in this video. Well, due to it being the last one and the first one to be an exact match. Um, but they look very similar to a Diplocalus, just in terms of the face. Um, face shape. They took some creative liberties, obviously, with, you know, the, you know, firing Dreepy out of the head that was not in real life Diplocalus. But... They're fine taking some creative liberties. It still very clearly is based on a Diplocalus and does that job well. Again, they also added the, the ghost inspiration. But again, that kind of links it more to being an extinct animal due to being a ghost. In fact, that's even mentioned in its Pokedex entries that it had gone extinct and then just came back as a ghost type. And so it's very clearly linked to being an extinct animal, specifically the Diplocalus. So I think it being an exact match makes a lot of sense. So that's all of the direct extinct animal inspired Pokemon in Generation 8. So do you think I should have covered the fossils in more detail or Toxicity in general? Let me know in the comments down below. 
in general for this entire series, as this is the last in terms of generations for the series. It's not the last episode of the series. It's the last generation go over um, in this series in ter until, like, you know, Gen 8. So, is there anything in general you think I should have covered for this series? Please let me know before I do that addendum video, because otherwise I won't be able to include it in that addendum video, well, obviously. But again, please let me know in the comments below if there's anything you think I should have added throughout this entire series to this Extinct Animal Inspirations addendum video. And then, so after the Extinct Animal Inspirations addendum video, I thought I'd mention, I'm going to do a more of a looking back at the entirety of the series. Like, the next one's addendum, and the final one's more of a look back at, and just look at various trends, um, look at quantities of extinct animal Pokemon, look at, like, various close enough, six, um, like, extinct, um, close enough, exact matches, and hows throughout it, just see, like, the ratios and stuff for that, just, like, as a look back and see, like, how Pokemon has done in terms of getting extinct animals into the designs of their Pokemon, just as a general look back at, at everything and all. And then, after that, I'd likely be shifting more into more of a zoological theory, um, videos for my Pokemon ones, like, very similar to the, um, one I made about Pokemon Legends Arceus with Lycanroc. So something more in like that category, basically looking at the animals that a Pokemon is based on and saying it should be in this one area or um, it, why it shouldn't be in a certain area. Well, that one's probably going to be harder, mainly the why it should be and other stuff related to zoology and Pokemon I'll probably be doing after that. So it's going to be the addendum video followed by looking back and then I'll be moving more into that extinct and not extinct, uh, just zoolo zoology of Pokemon and just in general. So, without any further ado, let's actually get to the final closing of the video. So, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye!